It's time! The ATM, the Apologise to Me podcast, episode six. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for the platform out of New Zealand. With me, the one true voice of the people talking New Zealand sport, Mark Watson. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf. Eins, fein, drei, vier, fünf, six, sieben, acht, neun. Ich nie san, san, she, go, roku, nana, hachi, q. The theme is nine. nine. Nine, Martin. Do I need to remind nine. you what nine means when you walk? One win, pal. One win for nine Liverpool. Nil. They get nine nine goals. nil. Look at the table, mate. Guess who you're behind. Guess who you're right behind. That's my butcher staring at. We're talking. Where to their art for now, All Blacks? Are we now locked into what are a test by test game purge for the rest of the year and all of next for Ian Foster, the All Black coach? I want to talk about NPC, FPC, and starting some kind of red zone like program in New Zealand because no one is watching these competitions. Uh, they're all all the games are on at the same time, and something has to dramatically change if New Zealand rugby and Sky TV want an audience for the domestic rugby competitions. And the thorny old question about, is it time to ditch the haka? Apologise to me! But let us start now. Where to now for the All Blacks? A couple of weeks ago, we'd beaten South Africa. All seemed okay again in Camp Foster. There was that lull period after um, the, the rugby union came out and they said they're supporting him and they're reinstating him and everything else. It was a little post-coital. And then on the weekend, we had that bad sex All Blacks again, didn't we, eh? unsatisfying, disappointing, a really soft finish. And you left there thinking, well, I thought we'd gone to counselling. I thought we'd sorted all this out. I, th- I, th- I thought we were over this. But, but quality time, Martin. Quality time. You've got to have quality time, and we need to talk. Uh, look, it, it's a fascinating one. I, I, I said it. I, I never felt that South Africa were just not that good. And so when we had that win over South Africa, you've only that was highlighted by the fact that the Wallabies beat them and beat them comfortably over the weekend. But look, Ian Foster, he needs to resign. That's He's the guy that at the moment it's getting to the point where he's gone from being probably a really good guy to being very, very maligned. And it's starting to look like it's his ego now that's taken over and he's putting himself ahead of the greater good of the actual country because the New Zealand Rugby Union are not going to backtrack again. They've now put themselves into a corner that they simply cannot get themselves out of. You know, we don't have the playing stock at the moment. You, you know, we talked about what we might talk about. Is this the worst all-black team in history? It, well, well, if you look at the results, it is. It's the worst all-black season in history. It's one of the history. worst we've ever, yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah. But, I wasn't around in 1949 when but, we lost 4-0 okay, to the Springboks, and neither were you. But in all the time I've watched all-black rugby, which is since 1975 and the water polo test at Eden Park, yeah. we've gone through some pretty dull lull periods. But right now, we we are creating history for all the wrong okay. reasons. But, but let's have a look at it. Does it really surprise you? You've got a fullback playing at second 5'8". You've got a winger, the best winger in the world, playing at centre. You've got, I mean, how long has Dane Coles been in All Black? Are we going back to the 1890s? I mean, he, he he's... But he hasn't played in the last few games. But, he's but not on the But then you've field. got Cody Taylor, who has been just simply woeful this season. And then you've got players like Kurt Eklund around the country, who I thought was magnificent for the Blues this year. Looked like he had a little bit of go forward. Looked like he had a little bit of athleticism. And then we still want to adopt this PowerPoint presentation. And you would have thought they would have learnt. The best players on the field were Toki Alahi, the hooker. Okay, and what do we do? Take after 44 after minutes, we take him off. It? Then you yeah. get Stephen Perifer. I feel sorry for him. I remember 1986. I always remember Marty this. Berry. Against, yeah, coming on yeah, Marty, against Australia. Marty yeah. Berry, 58 yeah. seconds, the shortest test cap in history. And, but that was a different situation. They didn't have the rolling subs. And so we've got this tokenism going on. And then you hear Ian Foster, and it's the same rhetoric. You've done a lot of pieces where you've heard the Warriors use the same excuses every week, and uh, things are only going to get better. And But it doesn't really surprise you when you look at when you look at the setup, there's about 25 staff in the background. You went last week and went through all the different people that are hired by Bike NZ. Yeah, so I I mean, we've you. got scrum coaches. We've got a defence coach. We've got a forwards coach. We've got a backs coach, coach and yeah. a tax coach. We've got people telling them what they can eat. We've got people telling them how they need to get fit. We've got people who carry their bags. Um, it, I mean, and when, then we wonder why when they get out there, they can't think, that they can't think for themselves. You, I, I, you know, 
Yes, we're not close to the coalface, but I think New Zealanders are all entitled to have an opinion. I do think that we are a reasonably intelligent rugby public. Everybody can see that Sam Kane's either woefully out of form or playing in the wrong position. But you guarantee when they name this team, yes, we can, Ian yeah. Foster is... He reminds me of that gambling addict who just thinks, hey, I will beat the house the next time I lay a bet, forgetting that Las Vegas wasn't okay, built on winners. There's a lot to process there. Okay, let's go back to your original point about Ian Foster. And one thing that I will criticise Ian Foster about is that the loyalty he has, I think, is becoming his Achilles heel. There was a couple of coaches at the end of last year that the players said that they didn't want who under review were underperforming as coaches. His loyalty meant he kept them on uh, to his own detriment and and, and and also creating a hell of a lot of conflict for himself in that situation as head coach. I think with Sam Kane, he's in exactly the same position now where he anointed that guy as captain while he was injured well over a year ago. And I wonder whether he now feels because he's been so loyal to him, he doesn't. I mean, that's the thing with the All Blacks over decades, isn't it? That trying to get rid of somebody has always been a hell of a lot harder than trying to get somebody in the team. I also I do question, though, whether or not you and everyone else make foster a focal point because it's really easy to look at one person and go okay get rid of that guy um he, he's he's not what we want at the moment he doesn't look like what we want at the moment he's 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 the you know the the obvious answer to the question is why the all blacks are no good or why the all blacks are so inconsistent it's got to be him i think there's a hell of a lot more problems and it goes a lot deeper mm. than that how we you know it's like anything it's like politics it's like the leader in the band it's like you know ultimately Everyone does look at one person and go, you are it. And we see it with the National Party every every five minutes, don't they? You're the guy, get rid of you. Get another guy in, get rid of you. The, you know, the problem with the National Party isn't the, the the actual focal face. It's the fact that the party is an absolute shame. There's no policy. So with the All Blacks, changing him, I'm still not convinced, changes yeah. absolutely everything. But are we now locked into a situation where every single week and every single test match, this is going to happen? Because if it does then I just think that the worst aspect of it is is that it's going to seep into everything about the team. If if we lose again to Argentina, if we beat Argentina, does it make everything all right? No, it doesn't. If we if we lose the Bledisloe Cup after that, then the same questions come up again. And, you know, as far as Ian Foster goes, how much more as a person can you actually take? And I'm wondering whether or not that's going to be the ultimate decider, whether he just thinks, I've just, I can't do this and I've had enough of this. Well, I think there was some empathy towards Ian Foster and making sure the right people were around him with the recent pressure. But he's been given the nod and we continue to lose. And I think that empathy will definitely disappear and there won't be a lot of sympathy for Ian Foster and if he ends up falling on his sword, which I think he does need to do. But as long as we continue to go down this path, everybody knows what needs to happen, at least from a perception point of view. But as long as we continue to go down this path, pick up the newspapers. How much more damage has been done to the All Black brand from over the weekend? How much more damage and negativity has been reported in the papers today? The UK are having a field day on us. You can't the mass media decide what the hell happens in any aspect because all of these people that run these pay organisations have all got their own agendas and their agenda is clickbait and the clickbait is the easiest thing to do. You've done radio shows over the weekend. I've done radio shows since that defeat as well. And yeah, I get that the the mood seems to be pervading, but that's the people that decide that they're going to call up or that they're going to click on or that they're going to post something on social media. But Martin, a lot of people have come out prior to this and never, ever felt Ian Foster was the right job. These are not people who are cowards wise after the fact now. There was a lot of sentiment towards Ian Foster never getting this job and it's come home to roost now. And and so this is, as I said, this this is not about people stirring here. This guy picks his players. This guy's had autonomy. He's part of the Steve Hansen setup, who, in my opinion, along with, as I've said before, actually have eroded large parts of the game or have been responsible for the erosion for large parts of the game, which is one of the other aspects. You know, I didn't touch on this a lot last week, but go and watch the quality of some of the NPC, and you think, hang on, these are the best players from our club system around the country. And some of the rugby is woeful. It's poor. It's woeful. Yeah. And then we're wondering why our All Black team's not performing. But this isn't a fair, this isn't you, a first, well, Mark. I mean, this is a, you, I mean, this has been going on for I know years, Mark. This has been going on for years. We won't, you, you know, often, what is one of the criticisms that people say about Scott Robertson and why he perhaps shouldn't be an All Black coach and part of the reason why perhaps he didn't get the job originally? Oh, he hasn't coached overseas. He hasn't done enough. But okay. So you think there needs to be a multi-level pathway where these guys need to earn learn at every different level. Well, surely that's the same thing for the players. But we've taken all of that away. And now 
be good at secondary school, then become an All Black. Yeah, pretty much. And so, why is that system? Why why are we happy to say that system's not good enough if you want to be an All Black coach? But it's okay now to be an All Black. And so the erosion of all of those layers of rugby are a big part of it. I go through and I have a look at the board, and I think there's a lot of um, I think there's a lot of um, identity politics and a lot of box ticking in that yeah, in terms is. of expertise. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that whole... There's no all black on that board, mate. That, there's that, no one that's played test match rugby well, for Matthew New Zealand Cooper, apart from Farah Palmer. Uh, Matthew Cooper is now on that board and I've got a lot of time for Matthew, but he's only just come on. But you just sit there and go, you know, all you're doing is a box ticking and somehow think this is going to work. That's and what New Zealand not, rugby does, and it, mate. And that's how they do it. And, they throw money at something and then they walk away and they think that we've just thrown I, money at I'm going to say this again. Ian, if you're listening... Please resign. Please just have some dignity and resign. Okay, so... The, and, 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 and then... The whole thing changes, you think, that if a guy called Scott Robertson comes in, that all of a sudden this no, all black side turns into a world-beating side. Well, Because you are naive and stupid no, if you think well, that. No, but it depends then on what players we look at. If you stick with the same group of players, well, tell me who's, nothing is okay, going to okay, change. Okay, you tell me. Okay, you write down for me now. You write down 10 names that are going to come into that all black squad in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to win the World Cup no. because of those guys. Well, okay. Well, I defy you, you, you to. I defy you to find that that there are any better players out there at the moment than 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 the the lot that we've got at the moment. And the lot that we've got at the moment, most of them are woefully inadequate, okay. and they aren't go international back, class back, players. Go back twelve months to Tottenham Hotspur and how bad Harry Kane was, right, as a player. Oh, mate, what do you mean? No. A, he can't do that. I mean, he scored two hundred goals before no, that. He no, just no, had a terrible. No, be it, no, but then you look at it. Then Conte comes in with Spurs, and look at how this guy has suddenly been resurrected. Look at suddenly the energy he's playing. Look at Harry Kane. He is arguably now the best striker. So your answer in to the English question then football. goes so, back to so you so think that Scott Robertson is going to make that hey, much I of a difference? I haven't said Scott Robertson is necessarily the next all black coach. Well, who is it then? Well, that's what we've got to sit down and who work out. Who else could it possibly be, mate? Well, it's going to be Scott Robertson, but I'm just simply saying Every that at the other moment, coach has already got Ian, a job. you have to still address public perception here, mate, because you are... Public You're, perception does not dictate the no, All Blacks. It's but part public, of... public perception dictates the value of the All Black brand, which we have had valued at $3.5 billion. And that is based on the perception of the people. That is a complete joke. And for Silver Lake to turn around and say that the All Blacks are worth the same as Manchester United is an utter farce. And we all know that. I mean, for Silver Lake to turn around and try and stuff that down our throats. What? Please, give me a break. You walk around... Half the planet and ask them who Manchester United is. They'll tell you. Mm. Ask them who the All Blacks are and what rugby is. they got no idea, mate. I mean, that's just pie in the sky. PowerPoint presentation, as you like to say. A whole lot of rhetoric and a whole lot of bollocks is what it is. Well, if you, How do you, if turn... you mention the word All Blacks these days around the world, someone's going to go, hang on a minute, that's subconscious racism. No, what they're going to do is they're going to go, oh, that's right, they just won that sevens tournament, didn't they? They did, because okay. we franchised because that we franchise, And we diluted the brand. Okay, so let's get back to what is most important, is that team winning. And how do you change that team this weekend to play Argentina and win? Okay. Uh, he's got to drop Sam Kane. First and foremost, yep. he's got to make that hard decision because you know, the captain is not playing okay. up to the so, standard so, that we so need. So you bring Hoskins to 2 and an 8 and give him a crack. You bring Vardy Severe to 7. No problem there. You stick with your starting front row that you had last week and in the front. And keep them on the field. And keep them on the damn field. You bring and Brody if you keep them on in. the field for 75 minutes. I'd bring Brody but, back in. I'd put Scott Barrett back at six like he played in the first test against no, Ireland. And I'd use no, Shannon Frizzell no, as no, a No, Shannon event. Frizzell started. I thought Shannon Frizzell actually played well at six. Yeah, when Let's he's not go there, on the Barrett brothers. When he's hey, there. Hey, hey, did I tell when you, he's there. Did I tell you that the Barrett brothers when he's grew, there. Up, grew up and played rugby together in the back Look, listen, and their dad played for Taranaki? against the Barrett brothers. You've always had something against the Barrett brothers. No, that's not true. That's not true. Look. What we lack with that number six at the moment is since Jerome, we've tried 16 guys in that position and there is no consistency. I don't well, know whether Shannon Frizzell is going to get the Jerome okay. consistency, but if you do remember with Jerome Kano as well, it took him a couple of years before he got to that level every single game that he okay. played. But, okay, what about the back line? Are you okay, changing so the back line? Will Jordan goes to fullback. Where does Geordie Barrett go? Geordie Barrett goes to the bench. He goes to second five is where no, he, he goes. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does, He's mate. another utility. He's not a second five eight. You go Quinta Paya at second oh, five eight. That is our second five eight solution for bring, the World Cup. Is that and you, right? And you bring He's in, a super rugby player. And you know what you do? What he is. He's probably down. He's probably out playing. He's probably down the Waikato River, white bait fishing. But you bring in Alex Nankerville at centre, and people go, Alex, who? Oh, I don't God. know. Okay, Alex Nankerville has God. a heart. Right. Okay, now Alex Nankerville is a centre. You almost made sense at the start of this podcast. Oh, Martin, 
Mate, you've gone into La La Cuckoo Land again. Hey, you should get a job. You should go and get a job on the breakdown on Sky because you'll be a wonderful PR cheerleader for New Zealand rugby, my friend. They can do. It's not Ian Foster's fault. I don't, it's not the players' I fault. I don't nod my head enough because every presenter on Sky gets paid by the head okay. nod quite clearly. No, okay, but you asked me who that backline was. I, I want to see Stephen Perifetta get a chance at first five eight. Oh, come on! So you're telling me God Richie Mawanga? Sake. Richie Mawanga oh when he's hey, hey Martin, I'm joking, mate. Look at his form for the Blues, mate. I mean, he's not a world-beating player. It, look, this guy might be a utility player for the All Blacks. And but who in the All Black team is a world-beating player at the moment? Adi Savia. That's it. And? For you, you put Perifetta. You tell me, Richie Mawanga, brilliant when he's got room. The moment the, f- the guy goes missing in action, Bowden Barrett cannot, cannot execute a game plan. He can be told a hundred times, but his natural instinct is to kick, and he doesn't listen. Steve Hansen himself has said that. Why not give Stephen Perifetta? It can't get any worse than this, Martin. No, it can't. can't get any look, worse. You know, Justin Marshall was on the program with us, and it, w- the way that he reacted actually was really surprising to me. He, he was... He almost had anger in his voice, and it was about the fact of stuff the World Cup. He said every single test match that we are playing at the moment, he said, we are wrecking what we have spent 100 years building. He said, these guys are creating bits of history, which for 100 years, we we worked hard, sweated, and established. And he said, every time they play, they're dropping another one. No, but this is what I've said, and this is what I've said previously. The reappointment of Ian Foster simply said to me that it is now okay to lose test matches as long as we win the World Cup. So what we've done is we've reduced rugby to once every four years. Forget the 80% winning record. Forget the invincibility of the all-black jersey. Hey, let's franchise it at the same time so that around the world when the Sevens team get tipped up by Fiji or Samoa, it's reported as the all-blacks all losing. losing. That's it. You know, you how's, won- that, how's that for, how's that for uh, you know, reinforcing your your brand that yeah, is this unbeatable, but, mysterious, but, mystique all-black jersey that we just went and lost to Nigeria in a game of Sevens? Yeah, but when is the all-black jersey... An all black jersey with major sponsors all over it. Let's erode the brand. You people go, but that's ridiculous, Mark. We need their money. We need to leverage them. You go, yes, okay, I get that. But there was something really unique about the all black jersey it just being purely there black, mate. It wasn't it? One of the few yeah. jerseys, Barcelona did it briefly when their fans, or no, they put a, I think they, they put, put UNICEF, UNICEF on it because they which, could, okay? But the no fans American sports that. franchise has sponsorship no, on their duty. They agreed. just won't allow it, right? And I know that we don't have the catchment, obviously, to support that. But with the Silver Lake money, the one thing that the All Blacks had is this aura around them, which is now sadly being eroded every single time we play. And if we don't go and win that World Cup next year, it's 12 years between drinks, and we're a side that's ranked fifth or sixth in hey, the world at the moment. Just quickly, can, just quickly, what size are you, mate? Because I've just got that cheerleading uniform there. Can I uh, also, black and white, that looks good on you, doesn't I it? Can I also give us an F, here. Give us an O, give us an S, give us a T, give us an E, give us an R. We've got winner! And, and I'm okay. Martin Devlin. Apologise to me! I'd also like to add in, and I know that this is an old chestnut to bring up, but it's time for me that we ditch the haka before matches. I agree. It is an entertainment gimmick that is now part of a marketing package that the All Black brand sells, right? And I sit there and I watch these players gather in the middle and the, the cameras go in formation and everything else. And the choreography that goes on is just you sit there and you watch that and you think afterwards you can train and learn how to do that, but you can't throw a ball into a line out. It's just, and it just, I'm absolutely perplexed by it. You get every single move of the haka exactly right. You, it's faultless every time you do it. Yet we bring you on the field with 10 minutes to go to throw the ball to our guy and you cock it up, mate, and you can't get it right. You know, to me, this the, the way that the haka is, it should be spontaneous and it should be done out of love and pride. At the end of the Joburg match, that's when it should have been done when yeah. they actually won that. Yeah. And and you don't do it at the start of a game. You don't do it at the end of a game. You do it when yeah. it's actually but appropriate and you feel like it. The best thing that Wales ever did to me in the last 10 years of rugby or so was to tell the All Blacks, you're not going to do it. You're not doing it on, on our stadium. And they did it in the dressing room, right? And they came out to play. But I think these days... It, look, the haka was never meant to be show business. But it was actually meant to mean something. Of respect. And now that it is, it is actually turned into that, it's a it's a meme. It's an Instagram. And to me, it's just it's yeah. lost whatever it is the power yeah. of what it is. And the other teams, mate, look, they don't stand there and respect it. They just sit there and laugh and turly and say, "Do your funny little yeah. dance." And by the time you actually exude all that emotional energy out of that, we're going to win the first kickoff and we're going to be down your end.
I think it's detrimental now to the All Blacks' performance. You you look over the last 15 years, more often than not, how slow do we start an All Black Test matches? What is the one common denominator that we do every game prior to the start? Now, I've been in a lot of high-level sport and around a lot of elite athletes. The last thing you want to do before you get into performance is get a big adrenaline rush, is to get really, really wound up. Because it'll pick you up, but at some point it's going to bring you down. down. Yeah. And so, but this is what the All Blacks have become. It's all about the money side it's of it. This though. is what rugby's become. We are a bubble forget, gum brand forget the is Mitre what we are. 10 Cup, forget Super Rugby. Let's just make sure, as you said, let's get the Instagram hits. Let's make sure we've got the hucker out there. Hey, let's put, and what I say, and this is the biggest mistake any organisation make, let's put commercial decisions ahead of performance decisions. That's absolutely New Zealand rugby to a T, Mark. You know that. That's, it. that's all New Zealand rugby is about these days. That is why. New Zealand rugby spent whatever they spend and they won't actually say, but it's at least hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a mural celebrating equality and diversity. I mean, for God's sake, that's that's what they spend their money on. Meanwhile, the reality is your, meanwhile, your major brand is losing matches to countries that have never, well, ever beaten meanwhile, us. Meanwhile, Manawa too have had to reduce their squad to 28 players because they can't afford any more, but they could take the money from the mural, mural. because it's a lovely box ticking that's exercise. It. That's all it is, mate. We could take the million and a half dollars they end up paying out Ian Foster because well, it's going to be much more than that mate it's going to be much more yeah. and think what you could do with that money think what you could do with that money apologize to me okay let's change tax as far as the rugby is concerned I look at the NPC and I look at the FPC and I flick between these games on the weekend and it was a beautiful day outside and I spent some time inside watching and I was thinking that this is an impossible competition to watch you've got three games on at exactly the same time on different channels and you're asking us to choose there's no one in the grounds or it's such a paltry crowd anyway there's no one watching on tv at some stage new zealand rugby and sky tv have got to look at a red zone or a strike zone concept where you actually have one centralized person in the studio and i'll volunteer for this job because there's no one at sky tv that is capable of actually hosting a program like this and and Ma- and Ma- actually Martin, Martin, have... face for radio mate i can put a mask on if that's what they require um, you have one game, which is your feature game. The other games that are going around at the same time, because you've got cameras at all these games, you've got OB trucks at all these games, and you just go, oh, okay, uh, try time in Wellington. So we go back and we have a look at that. Yeah. And you could actually have the Farah Palmer Cup at the same time playing it simultaneously. You have an entertainment package that goes for three or four hours, right? That is how you sell it to the young people these days. Right. They are not watching individual games, and the horse has long since bolted. And it's a, look, the, those two competitions are made for TV is what they are. Yeah. They are TV sports. They're not go-to game sports anymore. And unless New Zealand rugby get their act together, you're losing a generation. We're di- Our generation's dying, Mark. We're dinosaurs, no. okay? You, you know, whereas my kids are in their late teens and early 20s, that's how they watch yeah, sport. Yeah. No, no, but, they but watch it in sound There's bites, a reason mate. why the Americans are doing it, because they've got the trends. They're smart. They understand it. The biggest problem with Sky Television, from my experience, is they just simply don't listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth. He wasn't stupid. Now, they've invested $450 million in rugby over a five-year period. That's $70 million. No, yeah, it was over four years. $70-odd million a year, or 90, forget the maths, what is this is like Joe Biden, isn't it? <laughs> trying to do the Treasury, isn't it? I mean, hell in a okay. second. So, so we're looking at about... It's quite a large sum of money. We're, we're looking at about $80 million a year they're spending on Rugby Plus. What are they doing to secure that investment? They're not. They're just continuing to do the same, same thing, thing they've done every again. year. Exactly. They don't leverage it. No. So, And what I mean by that is there's no discussion on any of the rugby shows to get people talking around the water cooler. Uh, nobody wants it because they're a PR firm. That's it, what right, they've exactly actually done is reduce are. rugby to the 80 minutes in the middle of the park. We are... Why are we so engaged with the English Premier League? Why are we so engaged with the NBA? Because and there's the NRL, multiple narratives these going on. Exactly, mate. It's four years ago, Sky's share price was into the $4. Now, it's listed on the stock market here at $2.40 or $2.50 at the moment. But that's for 10 shares. So it's basically got itself down to $0.25 cents a share. But they still know everything. They still have it right. They still just believe, hey, we'll throw it. Forget Forget whether it's quality. We'll just throw it at you. We'll throw it at you. They know everything. I, I Rugby to, is the I, most I, I, poorly I wanna, presented sport I, I in this country. You, it is 
boring. It is predictable. It's stuck in quicksand. Oh. There is no one that actually says anything. There's no one that relates to the fans. There's no engagement with the fans well, at all. Oh, oh. I mean, what, doing a few Vox pops after a game? I mean, But no one's watching no it. One's, no that's... one's watching it. It is not appointment viewing. And this is, nothing is appointment viewing. Sky is no longer the default any for anyone. I, I want to just tell you a quick story. I went in to present a television concept and I had this pressure tested with some very powerful business people and I looked at models overseas at what was successful. I went in there, I gave examples. You know the rea- you know the comment I got in my meeting? So Mark, you're just trying to target half a million white middle class men. Well, and it was said mate. and it was said in a really derogatory way. And I sat there and I said, well firstly I think that's racist unless you believe that Europeans are the only ones that are racist and therefore it's okay to throw it back on them. And I thought, well hang on a minute, as you said they're all Sky subscribers. My answer was, no, I'm actually just trying to target half a million to a million sports lovers. Trying to actually produce lovers. a good sports, yeah, sports show. Lovers. And, and, and then they said, oh, is that, you, is that who you're trying to reach? And I said, well, hang on a minute. And I, and I used people like Mike Hoskin on ZB who clearly have big audiences because they have an opinion, but I used a lot of examples. And I, and, and I said, well, hang on a minute. They're your customers. Mm-hmm. They're actually the majority of your Sky shareholders, but they're also the... 500 middle-class white males, as they like to call it, are also the reason why there's 14 to $16 million a year spent every year on the Mike Hosking breakfast and advertising. It's like, what part of this don't no, you no, get? No, they don't get it. Mate. I didn't realise, I didn't realise when you're listed on the share market that somehow they don't realise that go woke, go broke. See, there's no woke in this bloke. Sky TV have had zero idea in the last None. 10 years None. about how to present any kind of sport. Every program is exactly the same. You watch their rugby league presentation with the Warriors. It is boring. It is suffocating. Well, it's, it's just got know, people saying cheesy bollocks and, and telling us that we're going to finish the season on a high. Well, let me tell you this. The only people that are high are the people who are stoned and they actually believe this rubbish and this nonsense, okay? Because the rest of us actually don't. We will finish on... The Barrett Brothers. No? Okay. What's the last one? What's the last one, Martin? That'll do. No, what's the last one? That'll do. Don't do that, Martin, to me. We had one more to do, didn't we? I'm not doing Barrett, brothers. Well, because well, well, you're suddenly realising I'm right, Martin. Don't you like the fact I'm right, Martin? Barrett Off you go, brothers, Martin. Mate. Hey, Martin. Well, me in that team this weekend. Devian. I don't do if, books, and maybe. I do absolutes. Do you know what I'm trying to say? The Platform.